the Jeep Talk Show. Now, two episodes a week. What? Two episodes? Okay. Yes, that's right. Two. Are you excited? I'm always excited when it comes out on Friday. It's actually a go-to podcast that I can actually listen to while I'm heading over to work or on my way home. New episodes every Friday and early Monday morning and time for your commute. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. Hey, I just want to remind you folks that we need your help. We want you to share the Jeep Talk Show with, uh, well, everybody you know, uh, the your pastor. Uh, I, well, I made a bathroom reference last week. I don't care where you are. Let everybody know whether they want to know or not about the Jeep Talk Show. We really appreciate your help getting the word out. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a Jeep, want a Jeep, or never do anything but Jeeps, this show is for you. Josh, Tammy, Wendy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about Jeepies. That's right. What's up, Jeeper? <laughs> I'm Josh, and on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, I'll be looking a little further into the global chip shortage. We'll take a look at the new generation of police Jeeps and who's getting them, and I'll even tell you how you can get in on some Jeep charity money, too. And later, I'll ask a question about taking it off. This, uh, of the Jeep. <laughs> this, uh, this chip shortage is not going to affect my nachos, is it? No, not thankfully. It, this hasn't hit the corn market. So, oh, uh, thank we'll God. <laughs> hey, I'm Tony, and the, uh, this episode we'll be talking about the Jeep Talk Show Off-Road Texas event. And in the next episode, I'll be uh, talking to Mark, also known as FM Jeeping, about his recent runaway Cherokee. Get out of the vehicle, take like five steps, or I shut the door, take five steps. All of a sudden, I heard a, a pop. I, was, I turned around, and I'm like, what, what the f- was that? And then all of a sudden, it popped again. And when, when it did, the vehicle started rolling backwards. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. Well, the shortage continues to affect Jeep production. The global chip shortage of semiconductors will keep production of the Jeep Cherokee down for the next two weeks at least. That means its plants in Belvedere, Illinois and Windsor, Ontario won't be running next week or the week of September 20th after both have already seen months of downtime this year because of the microchip shortage that some predict could last well into next year. But the shortage doesn't cut evenly. As it were, um, automakers, including Stellantis, have sought to prioritize production of their most profitable trucks and SUVs. The company this week held a job fair, actually, in Detroit to hire production operators for its facilities in Metro Detroit. Stellantis continues to work closely with their suppliers to mitigate the manufacturing impacts caused by the various supply chain issues facing the automotive industry. Meanwhile, increasing COVID-19 cases in countries like Malaysia are exacerbating the chip shortage, too. Chip manufacturer Unisim, according to Bloomberg at least, is shutting some plants for seven days after three employees died recently from the virus. Closures like this have devastating effects on the industry and more are expected to come across the globe in the fourth quarter of 2021. I've already told you what this means for new car buyers and now this means that the artificial inflation of the used car market will likely continue into next year as well. Yeah, I was uh, seeing something about this uh, in the on the internet someplace, and I thought to myself, if if they're going to have problems the twenty twenty three with stuff, uh, used car market is just going to go higher and higher and higher. Pretty soon, you're going to be able to get to old an old Cherokee uh, uh, XJ for a nickel. You know, when it all drops and so the bubble pops, you put it off, when the floor all <laughs> falls out from underneath this. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I mean, this bubble will pop as they do, and, and all of this artificial inflation is is all going to come falling down. Uh, and, and so, you know, and this this is going to apply also to to depreciation as well. So we're seeing, you know, uh, on average, anywhere between ten and thirty percent increase in in these car in vehicle purchases. Uh, and, and that, you know, as soon as you drive off the lot, you know, that vehicle depreciates thirty to fifty percent. Uh, and, and so, you know, these prices and the depreciation and the artificial inflation, I mean, this has the automotive industry, at least as far as the sales and the used car market and everything, just completely on its head. I uh, talked with some dealership friends and whatnot, and they've never seen anything like this. I talked to some people who've been in the industry over 20 years uh, and, and have really never seen or know how to deal with stuff like this. Uh, this is a, a volatility in the industry that, that uh, we've never seen before. So, 
uh, what it means moving forward and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that is sort of having to fill into the blanks and, and uh, you know, fill into the cracks, as it were. And, and a lot of stuff is, is coming out of the cracks, at least as far as, you know, used cars and stuff. We're starting to see a lot of, a lot more people uh, willing to sell what they were holding on to just for the sake of capitalizing on, on the market. Yeah, I think we might uh, trade in a TJ as soon as we can do a straight trade for a new uh, LJ, you know? <laughs> <laughs> If only, right? Oh, if only. It, it's it's wild though. It's just absolutely crazy. You know, we were doing uh, uh, advertising with uh, uh, South Fork uh, Chrysler Deep, Jeep Dodge and Ram with Chris, and uh, even in that uh, the little uh, the phone conversation I had with Chris, he was talking about the used car market being an all time high. They wanted those trade ins, and they just meant so much. So I, it's it's really wild. I think with the stimulus checks. And then uh, attached with the the high trade in values of used vehicles, it's really helped the 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 new market uh, people to get the get the new vehicles. And of course, whenever I got the the twenty twenty one Jeep Gladiator, I didn't trade anything in, and I certainly wasn't gonna, wasn't going to trade in the Cherokee. But uh, boy, if I'd had something like a Chevrolet truck or a Ford pickup or something I could have traded in, yeah. I probably would have made out like a bandit. Yeah, I could see that absolutely. Well, talking about bandits, uh, these guys are definitely going to get a hold, uh, get their hands on uh, on hold of some bandits, anyways. Jeep Gladiators added to Florida police oh, fleet. This is sweet, Look pretty impressive. Yeah, I, this was really some cool news. Law enforcers across the country are getting more bullish than ever in literally trying to stop criminals in their tracks, and they're doing it by mobilizing faster pursuit vehicles like uh, Ford F one fifty police responders, uh, customized confiscated muscle cars, and in some cases, in other countries. Supercars like Lamborghinis are repainted and upfitted with police-level communications, lights, sirens, and, well, everything else except a place to put a bad guy. And then there's the Hollywood, Florida Police Force. Yes, that is one place in Florida called Hollywood. Apparently, there's more than one. Sorry, East Coast Hollywood. Do you guys make bad movies, too? Anyways, the Hollywood, Florida Police Department has officially switched to aggressively built, custom-outfitted Jeep Gladiators. These behemoths have been a product of the talented team at South Florida, or SoFlo Jeep. These mad scientists over there have been featured a time or two here on the Jeep Talk Show in This Week in Jeep, as they occasionally build some of the most insane Jeeps on the planet. These particularly incredible Jeeps were cited as must-haves by the force after seeing SoFlo's modified Wranglers in action in Fort Lauderdale, where police added SoFlo's upgraded Jeeps to their enforcer fleet earlier in 2021. Impressed with how the city's finest were using the vehicles and checking out SoFlo's 13-year track record in customizing Jeeps, the Hollywood Police Force approached the company about taking advantage of similar builds as the Fort Lauderdale Department did. Wanting something a little bit more intimidating than the Wrangler, the Hollywood contingent opted for customized gladiators instead. Addressing the force's needs, SoFlo came up with a build that included heavy-duty steel front and rear bumpers, the front, of course, has a winch, police lights, and more. The Gladiators got a 4-inch lift and sit on 38-inch Nito Trail Grappler tires and black Rhino rims. Ooh, yeah. They are all sorts of auxiliary LED lights on all sides of these things for both pursuit as well as spot and utility lighting. And one unique touch are custom Kevlar-coated aluminum roll cages in each rig. Well, neither SoFlo nor the Hollywood Police Department will reveal what type of engines are in these Jeeps. The company usually is guilty of dropping in a 500-horsepower V8 LS3 Corvette engine. If clients request diesel instead, SoFlo will usually drop, opt to drop in a Jeep 3-liter Eco Diesel that delivers about 460 foot-pounds of torque. Either way, I'm sure there is a special police tune done regardless, and even the 392s may have a hard time getting away from these Jeeps. To see some of the pics of these bad boys, we'll head over to our site and check out what we have in the show notes for this episode. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, th- I would expect them to, to have a white vehicle so they could you know put all the police emblems and stuff on it. The black looks very sexy in this configuration, especially with the very big mean. black 38-inch uh, 38, 38 inch tires. Uh, and uh, I, I, th- I would only call... Um, I'd call a flag on the play if I saw Interceptor on the on the side of this vehicle, though. Yeah, even right. <laughs> even even with the 500 horsepower <laughs> LS3, because you know he ain't gonna corner very well. <laughs> it's straight line, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Now these things don't have a whole lot of uh, of, of clearance. I would say you know there's not a no. lot of room for for articulation here. I don't think that these Jeeps are meant to really go through the rocks. Right. Um, this does have a little bit more of a LCOG type of feel to it, a you know, low center of gravity build. 
uh, to where these things, I'm not saying they, they could handle like a go-kart, uh, but I would, uh, I would imagine these things do have sway bars front and rear fully connected, possibly even upgraded to enhance the stability and the cornering of these things. So, I mean, impressive builds nonetheless, and, and the police taking advantage of Jeeps now, uh, again, since the, I mean, I think the last time I saw a Jeep in any kind of police form uh, was an XJ for a sheriff's department uh, out in some rural county. So uh, to see, you know, the first time a, a police have been using a Jeep in, in, well, at least in this kind of configuration and with a very much of an off-road build uh, in 20 some odd years is, is pretty cool. Now, I've reported in the past about Italian Jeep uh, or Italian police departments using Jeep Cherokees and, and things like that for builds. We're not going to really count that. As far as police, the police departments using Jeeps, uh, this is, for all intents and purposes, a very much a real Jeep, very much built up to what you would expect a Jeep to be built like, uh, and but being used in a police-type fashion. So, cool, nonetheless. I think that's kind of the surprising thing about this, is it's built like a Jeep. Uh, even yeah. with the, the, the low center of gravity, you, th there could be arguments for that for the rocks. As long as you have it uh, pop properly... Uh, bump stopped uh, you can get away with this in the rocks uh, you just want to get as much articulation as maybe what you would uh, otherwise want but uh, it's still a very cool looking jeep oh and i just noticed and we'll have have these uh, these pictures in the show notes and i just want to cover this you can go to jeeptalkshow.com to read the show notes whether it's on your mobile device or your desktop device uh go over there to see these pictures and stuff but anyway I, I, it's really cool they they've removed the jeep logo uh from the the, the tailgate and have it say police uh, aptly so. Right. So, uh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Now you were talking. You were talking about you know uh, the they should have been white, maybe you know white and black, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So you could really stand out the the bet. I think they went this route to be a little bit more stealthy. Uh, so where they could you know they could hide out, they could have a speed trap. Uh, you're not going to see it uh, as clearly, especially at night. Uh, and, and so these are going to blend into the darkness a little bit more, and the police can uh, spring on you a little bit easier, I think. Can you imagine uh, being the, the guy that gets in trouble with the captain, uh, the police chief, and says, hey, no, nope, sorry, you don't get to drive the Gladiator tonight. You get in a, a regular patrol <laughs> car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. He's flirting yeah, with the right. girls, you know, at night. His wife is uh, pissed off, you know, driving a sexy Jeep. and uh, <laughs> Or, you know, the, the cop who's got the balls to pull over the other cop in the Gladiator because he was going too fast. You know, <laughs> slow down there, pal. <laughs> hey, hey, let, me, let me drive. Let me drive. No, no. Get the, go, it's go ahead. It's happened. It's happened. Oh, I've sure. seen the videos. Oh, on, sure. <laughs> well, not of the Gladiators, but still. Well, I'm sure by now you've heard of all sorts of big Jeep events that happen all around the nation all throughout the year. And some of them are competitive like the King of the Hammers, well, even though that's not really a Jeep-only event. But still, big events like uh, Jeep Beach and the Lone Star Jeep Invasion come to mind, uh, just to name a few. Well, I'm sure you've also heard of the annual Bantam Jeep Festival. Celebrating its 10th year in 2021, the family-friendly event is held at Cooper's Lake Campground about an hour north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, every year on the second week of June. This year, they had a total of 2,888 registered Jeeps show up, 157 sponsors and merchandise vendors, and 18 different food vendors. That's what I'm talking about. There were nearly 30,000 people at the event uh, festival grounds over the course of the three days, and there were also 15,000 Jeep lovers in downtown Butler for the Jeep invasion on Friday night. That must have been packed. They also had 1,387 Jeeps in the big 10th anniversary Jeep parade. That would have been cool to see, too. Like you have heard me say on this show for years, Jeepers come from all over the nation to attend events like this. And this year, Jeepers, just like you and me, came from 31 different states to the birthplace of the Jeep. The Jeep Festival returned this year after having to take a year off due to COVID. And now the organization wants to help local nonprofits. The Friends of the Bantam Jeep Association is accepting applications as part of their financial gift program. Butler County 501c3 nonprofit organizations are encouraged to apply to receive financial gift from the Friends of the Bantam Jeep Association. Organizations must submit a letter not to exceed 500 words that clearly explains how their organization benefits the community and how potential funds received will be used. Applicants must also provide proof of nonprofit 501c3 status via their EIN number. Now, after gifts are awarded, the organization will have a little bit of oversight in making sure the money is spent as it should, and they're going to be expected to uh, provide an update on their project's progress and or completion and provide photos to demonstrate the gift's impact on their organization. The online ap application must be received no later than October 31st, 2021, and gift recipients will be notified in late November. 
It's the fifth year of the program, and during that time, the group has awarded more than $93,000 to community organizations. If you think you may fit the criteria and are looking to receive a financial contribution from the Friends of the Bantam Jeep Association, we will have the link to the application in the show notes for this episode at jeeptalkshow.com. Could you imagine us being a wealthy uh, sh- podcast show and just be doing nothing except doing uh, these uh, these shows and going to these events? Yes, I have dreamed about it quite often. And if people would just having subscribe, we yeah, might get yeah, there one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, uh, that would be really cool. That would be a that'd be a hard job, you know, walking around looking at jeeps. And uh, uh, I wonder what, I what the re- what the re- retirement plan would be. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you know what they say, if you find something uh, you love and you do it for a living, you never work a day in your life. Very true. And if you've got a news tip or response to any one of our stories, we'd love to hear what you have to say. And be sure uh, you do that, but you can do it by phone or by email, actually. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to reach out. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Hey, have you told your friends about the 4x4 Radio Network? Well, you got to do it. Even if they don't drive Jeeps, it's it's okay. It's not their fault. But we've got something for every kind of off-roader over at the 4x4 Radio Network. We've got, well, the, the 4x4 Podcast, of course. Uh, tons of great off-road shows. The On the Trail Podcast, the Center Steer Podcast, Trail Chasers as well. Heck, even the Jeep Talk Show is there. It's all for free. It's all in one spot. All you got to do is go to 4x4radionetwork.com. We'll see you there. Hey guys, it's Wendy. Well, today's our last day. We're heading home after close to 6,000 miles on two wheels. Wow. And I can't count how many states we've done. Oh my gosh, what a fabulous trip we've had. So anyway, just wanted to say hi. I'll be on the show next Thursday. Um, Hope you guys are all doing well. And uh, hey, talk to you guys later. Bye. That's amazing. Could you imagine doing that many miles on a a motorcycle? I bet you could. I well, I, I think the longest I've done in a single day is just about 300, and I had some monkey butt after that. But uh, no, I can't imagine doing this kind of mileage. But I, I've got to, I've got to say, you know, Wendy did not file the proper forms before she left for the uh, motorcycle family uh, leave act, and and unfortunately, her position is no longer available with the show, and so she's going to be coming back to an empty computer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. Of course, I'm just kidding. We we love Wendy. So the, uh, the but it, it's just got to be really cool. I just wonder about the. Uh, uh, I just wonder how hot it is on those things. I mean, I know you got to breeze uh, all Depends the time. Depends on the time of year and what state you're going well, through and what time of day it it's is. It's summertime, man. I think it's hot all over right now. But uh, uh, I'm gonna have to ask her when she gets back because I keep seeing pictures of a two wheel motorcycle and a three wheel motorcycle. And I'm wondering which one she's on. I think the three one, three wheel may be a little more dangerous uh, in uh, uh, in uh, panic situations. But boy, I could see it would be very comfortable, you know, riding and not having to, you know, mess with the the balance or anything on it. Uh, like so easy boy with tires. I mean, yeah. So and it, that it may not be theirs. They that could be one of the people that are with them. But I, I've seen it in several images, so I'm kind of interested. in They have out. to interview Wendy and and release yeah. that as like some bonus content or something, just for the sake of of more information on 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 this and and other trips that she's taken like this. Gladiator. My name is Gladiator. Gladiators. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Gladiator. So, should I take offense at that squeaky thing at the end? Was that a bit of a a, a, a kick in the ribs there, Josh? <laughs> no, not at all. It, it's just you know, something to break up the the very much seriousness, the very ah. serious tone of, of the rest of that, and it just sort of let people know that uh, you know it's not all doom and gloom here on the Jeep Talk Show. <laughs> oh, good. We, I, I thought it was like you, you you rat bastard. You have a Gladiator that you drive. So, <laughs> which by the way, I don't ever drive. I the am thing. entirely jealous. Green with envy through and through, <laughs> without without exception. Uh, but uh, but I hope that, that in the very near future, and in fact, after September uh, 17th, 18th or so, around that neck of the woods, I'll be have it, having a chance to get behind the wheel of that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, certainly in the passenger seat, maybe even the back seat if you're lucky. Uh, but, <laughs> get, uh, in the, get in the bed <laughs> with you. <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's funny. Chris with uh, sevenslats dot com uh, sent me a, a a message yesterday. He was asking uh, about what time you were getting in on the seventeenth uh, to the Austin airport because he was actually looking at flights to maybe fly down. And then he was saying, "Oh wow, maybe maybe if there was room in the back of the Jeep Talk Show Gladiator bed, I could get a ride out." <laughs> 
<laughs> I could get a oh, ride out to Marble Falls. So it's funny because he actually, uh, by the time I got around to looking up what your flight was, uh, mm-hmm. he had looked up some information and, and his flight was five, came in five minutes before yours. No way. Yeah. So that, <laughs> How about that? That worked out really well. So, uh, you know. Oh, great. So I'm going to be greeted by both your ugly mugs at the airport. Yeah, All so, right. Well. So, Chris, well, but, but the fun thing is, is that I'll have to hand you the camera, the phone camera, so you can get a video of him driving the, uh, the 150 miles from uh, the uh, uh, Austin Airport out to Marble Falls. Oh. <laughs> him in the bed of the, the Gladiator. No, I'm just yes, kidding. Right. I told him it would comfortably Are seat five. Are back there yet? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I haven't heard. I haven't, haven't spoke with Chris after that after i told him that it, it lined up pretty well i think his flight was out uh left two hours after yours but uh as far as me dropping off that's no problem for me well <laughs> I, I, got, I, got, both off. I got four <laughs> words for chris duty free beaver nuggets oh uh, yeah go. oh and, you know and that that's the other thing <laughs> i thought about this i got it i got to do a, a bookies run to get a bunch of beaver nuggets to take out there too if, if for nothing else so that you can try them I was going to say, if nothing else, so I can I can at least try these things because I that's I mean all I've been thinking about is these damn beaver nuggets and <laughs> breakfast tacos. That's so. <laughs> now you yeah. can tell where my mind is about this trip. You know, yeah, uh, there's uh, a content creation uh, talking to you, <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, give me the food. <laughs> now there, I did find out recently that there is a uh, a five percent uh, fee if you want beaver nuggets without hair. So there's that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I was born in the seventies. I was an eighties child. I've eaten a Jolly Rancher out of shag carpet. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it'll 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 work. Yeah, just <laughs> So anyway, getting getting back to the actual show and not just us BS. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so that. so as as we have started, Josh and I are gonna talk about the Jeep Talk Show event in lieu of the rousing gladiator talk uh, this <laughs> in this episode uh, in fact the gladiator has uh, kind of stagnated in its modifications uh boy I, I just i went through a bunch of them really quick though uh, i'm really happy with that um, and no i know several of you guys have uh, have asked me uh, through social media the the nexon rodian mtx tires are not here yet still uh, but i would I not thought they were going to come in last week no no that's when they were coming or, or, or that, they were going to be delivered to the us last week oh so they okay. have to get them that off the boat you getting it. no right. it means the country is finally getting an, a, a shipment of these things yeah. okay they Got they it. should be they should be in in california and i don't know uh, uh i don't know anything about the shipping and how long it's going to take to get them out here and uh you know it may, it may be a call to uh to paul to find out uh, what's going on with them because if i go to order some that are going to be here in three days so i can have them on in time for the the event i don't want to wind up with 10 of them and, and it, it, you know that would be okay if we had 17 inch wheels on the other jeeps around here but we don't there are 15 inch <laughs> wheels so well time to buy a new set of wheels <laughs> i guess <laughs> no i'm not putting 17 inch wheels on these things they're designed for 15 more more rubber is more better yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm still waiting on those Nexon Rodian MTX tires. Uh, I, I have uh, I'm have, trying to have a positive idea about this. Unfortunately, I was thinking I had another week, but the, but actually the event is next week. No, is it's uh, yeah. As we record the show, the right. event is a week from tomorrow. So Se- September I, yeah. 18th, and uh, now Josh and I are going to be there on the 17th, uh, the the evening of the 17th. Your flight gets in around 5:30, I think is right. 5:35. So Something like that. I don't yeah. have a direct in front of me right this minute, but yeah. I can pull it up. No, that's all right. I think it's 535. It doesn't matter. Uh, there's not going to be a bunch of people with banners and going, welcome, Josh. God, so. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be really funny, wouldn't it? You'd be embarrassed as hell. Uh, oh, as all hell. I'm just going to turn around and walk right back. And, Sorry, guys. No, I'm not if, doing it. If we, could, if we could get a bunch of people to show up there as a joke, as a gag, we give everybody a big bag of beaver uh, nuggets, God. and what, you would be you pelting Josh me? with beaver nuggets. Like... <laughs> 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 we turn 10 shades of red yeah that, that's how it's done right there yes. but then of course i i could also just turn around and start opening my mouth and catching people yeah, like it's oh, you'd have to diving across the uh the airport like i'm in a beach volleyball contest or <laughs> so anyway you're supposed to be in around 5 35 uh, central time and uh, uh i think it's going to be a good hour for us to get out to the park uh, we'll have to get uh, you know into the uh, the bunkhouse and you know get stuff moved in there, and mm-hmm. hopefully after that we can uh, maybe start a fire out uh, in front of the uh, the bunkhouse and uh, just sit there and kind of chill in the uh, ninety five degree uh, evening temperatures <laughs> and have a good time. So if you guys are interested in coming 
uh, on Friday evening. And I know that there's several people that have already scheduled uh, uh, facilities out there to, to, to sleep overnight that are planning oh, wow. on being there on Saturday night. I got I got a message from one person saying that they they wanted to know if they could do video uh, of the event. And I said, of course, please do. Uh, and uh, they, they he followed up with it. They're going to be driving 13 hours to come to the event. And I know another person that's that's driving at least that far coming to the event. So oh, that's Jerry from Michigan, right? Yeah. And there's going to be yeah. so there's going to be several people that are going to be on there on Friday night. So if you guys would like to come out Friday night, of course, you don't have to camp there. You don't have to stay there overnight if you're if you're local. And if you just like to come out and hang out on Friday night, uh, Josh aren't going to be there. Uh, talking to people, I'm going to be having uh, lots of, uh, uh, I don't want to say drinks like alcohol, but we're going to be having uh, Coke and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Coca-Cola and uh, things that uh, you can uh, <laughs> partake <laughs> of. So it's going to be that kind of party, huh? All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not going to be, I'm not going to have the cheap talk show being arrested. So anyway, the uh, uh, more than welcome to be there. Of course, we'll be uh, going wheeling on uh, Saturday the 18th. Uh, currently, the plan is uh, to have breakfast uh, on the 18th and uh, uh, perhaps lunch. Uh, but certainly, if there is uh, no lunch provided, there will at least be places to eat there at the park. Uh, you could always drive. See, do I need to start making some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches now in order to have lunch? Then I did. You know, I'm just, just saying. I'm gonna pick up some stuff. Uh, I, I need to uh, make a run to Sam's, but uh, stuff that we can have because it's we're gonna have to have to have some stuff to snack on. You can't just have. Uh, two meals and uh, of course we can always leave the park and go over to marble falls and uh, and eat in town someplace so uh, you know, we, I'm, we I'm, don't have to I'm, stay at the park I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to barbecuing if they have grill facilities there available for us to to use i you know i'm, I'm not opposed to picking up some briquettes and some meat and throwing down on, on the grill and and uh and cooking some stuff either i i I've, I've sat on the show for over 10 years i love to cook and i like cooking for people too so uh, I'm not saying I'm catering this event, but uh, you, know, you, you might you might find me over some uh, over a bed of coals here, uh, you know, barbecuing some meat. So, well, well let's put it this way: you're not going to bring that stuff on the plane. You only have one bag you can take, and that'd be well, funny. I'm gonna that'd be, be funny if it was smelling. briquettes and. <laughs> I mean, got a rack of could you imagine there, you TSA, uh, <laughs> sir? Uh, no. <laughs> could not you explain only no, these, uh, <laughs> these briquettes? <laughs> So anyway, uh, but we'd have to go into into town anyway to pick that stuff up. So might as well just uh, eat. You know, it's so funny. It's Central Texas, and there's a a, a fairly decent seafood place uh, in Marble Falls. <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking, where where did you get this stuff from? But yeah, anyway, right? <laughs> but anyway, so uh, we're gonna play it by ear. We're just having a good time, and uh, hope to see you out there uh, on the 18th. And of course. Uh, we're planning on being there Saturday night. So anybody that's coming, on, you know, not coming until Saturday the 18th, uh, then if you want to hang around uh, uh, in the evening, uh, we're going to be there again that evening. So we can kind of hang out with uh, uh, people that are visiting, maybe some maybe some new friends that we meet on the trail even. Uh, and hanging out there at the bunkhouse or, or someplace. They have a nice pavilion. Even. Terry's, you know, maybe some, uh, some people from uh, some tire companies or something. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, and then uh, uh, Josh, and if Chris comes, uh, you guys will be going back on uh, uh, a Sunday afternoon. So there may even be a chance to do some wheeling during Sunday. We'll just have to play it by ear as far as how long it takes uh, to get to the airport, uh, estimating how long it takes to get to the airport, which I think is about an hour. Uh, to get to the airport, I don't think you're. I would be there, you know. Tony's late, stuck in traffic. I would be like, "Am I even at the right airport? You know, what's going oh, I've, on I've, here?" I've, I've never been there, so let's let's hope GPS uh, works uh, in, in Central Texas. <laughs> I've got no confidence whatsoever. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, and besides that, I mean, it's not that expensive to stay in the bunkhouse, so you could always stay there. I'm going home, but that you can stay there. <laughs> right, <laughs> taxi. <laughs> How much to uh, Oregon? Uh, so anyway, really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I, I think that uh, the last time I had looked on the event that we have on our uh, Facebook slash Jeep Talk Show uh, page, uh, the event mm-hmm. for this, uh, the event that we have scheduled for this, uh, this uh, hidden, uh, uh, hidden falls, man, I almost said Valley, this hidden falls event. Uh, we currently have 14 people that say they're going. So wow. yeah, no, that's great. I mean, it's it's a it's a bit short of six hundred, but fourteen is fine. <laughs> Where'd the six hundred number come from? I, 
Well, sure. Well, I mean, you know, well I'd love to see from the smell, I think I know where it came from. But anyway, there's uh, someone like 56 people that are interested and 14 people that are wow. confirmed coming. So even if we get half of the 56, that's going to be uh, there's going to be a fight over uh, the breakfast tacos. I can tell you right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, anything, even bad advertisement is good advertisement, right? Yeah. <laughs> So really looking forward to it. Entire group of jeepers poisoned. No, <laughs> not, not poisoned. Beating the hell out of each other for a breakfast taco. That's mine. Yeah, well, damn it! It's food poisoning because it sat around for too long or something. I don't know. So really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, first time, oh, and, yeah. and and we didn't even mention it this time. Uh, first time Josh and, and I will ever meet in person. So in over ten years of right. us doing this weekly show, uh, this will be the first time that Tony and I will have laid eyes on each other in person. I'm looking forward to uh, doing this again uh, and uh, maybe doing it where uh, we can get closer to where uh, Tammy and Wendy are and, and you as well and uh, all four of us getting together at the same time. That would be the ultimate. Uh, uh, I, I foresee it happening sometime in the next couple few years at Easter Jeep Safari. I, I honestly believe that the Jeep Talk Show will, will have its presence at Easter Jeep Safari one of these years in the very near future. Excellent. Oh, well, this is interesting. I just see a, a message that popped up in our uh, Facebook Live. And if you don't know, uh, you can uh, uh, watch us record the show on Facebook Live as well as uh, get into our Zoom meeting. But uh, you mm-hmm. should uh, sign up for the newsletter for the uh, the Zoom meeting information, uh, jeeptalkshow.com slash contact us. Look around there. You'll see how to sign up for our newsletter. But anyway, this uh, 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 Katie uh, D says, hi, guys. Uh, let's see if I get close to this. Ain't scared JKU. Yeah, I think that's right. Skeered. Uh, JKU. Yeah, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. <laughs> Cla- I'm scared of you. Glad I came across your page on the TikTok. Uh, I've been, I added the, uh, I've yeah. been enjoying watching the episodes retroactively. So there, there's a, there's a TikTok uh, converter, converted person for the Jeep Talk Show. Uh, and thank you for, uh, for joining us there. It, uh, uh, Katie, we really appreciate it. Uh, man, if you're anywhere close to Texas or maybe in Texas, we'd love to have you come out to the uh, the Jeep Talk Show event. And and this isn't the last one we're going to have, even if it's no, just no. me going out by by myself. Uh, I mean, we're not always going to be able to fly uh, hosts in, <laughs> but uh, this isn't the last one we're going to have. And we're certainly looking at doing something maybe closer to to your neck of the woods, uh, not just in Texas. It's just uh, convenient for me to to schedule those things for for myself. All right, Josh, we're looking forward to see you next week. And uh, uh, don't forget, um, uh, we still need to spend some time talking about uh, what you're going to need as far as, uh, I know you have some some sleeping requirements because of uh, your back and stuff. So we need to get get together and talk about what you may need for uh, a supportive enough mattress that that isn't a, 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 a California king or anything that I have to, fold up and put in the back of bed with the gladiator but something will be anything like that i'm I'm more worried about uh about the old factory senses uh coming into play but uh but that's a that's a topic for another discussion i I will order some of that uh methane stuff that the 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 criminal investigators put under their nose when there's a dead body oh yeah the white paste uh, that should the methylipnus or something You know, they ought to make underwear with that stuff in it. That would uh, kind of oh, no. that would that would stop it at the source. <laughs> oh, the, hey, that smells. I mean, what is the, that? Lipis? That smells good. <laughs> I think on the Tony and Josh show, I once reported about some underwear that had a oh, had the, a char- the filter, patch in it or something. the yeah. carbon filter. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that takes me back. <laughs> Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? Jeep Talk Show is in my weekly rotation. Look forward to it every week, each and every Friday. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. I support a great podcast and a lifelong Jeeper myself. Continue to learn with each and every episode that I listen to. Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. Absolutely. If you like Jeeps, anything to do with Jeeps, I like it for the, the technical, clear content, uh, advice, and learning. You goddamn rat bastards. I mean, welcome to the show. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you don't know what a rat bastard is, I was going to go with MF, but I remember we were on uh, Facebook Live, so I wasn't sure how that would fly. <laughs> if you're new to the show and you don't know what a rat bastard is, well, you're more than likely a rat bastard because rat bastards are people that listen to the show for free. How you dare you? You mother mucking fun of a sitch. <laughs> There, I said it. 
So, you know, and and as I've said, we don't mind if you're listening to the show for free. It's perfectly no, fine. A, but we're going to make fun of you. <laughs> a little so, bit. Maybe a little. A lot. Call you out every <laughs> so if you'd like to help support the show uh with your your hard-earned uh stimulus dollars uh just go over to cheaptalkshow.com slash contact and look and see how you can become a paid subscriber and no longer be a rat bastard and while you're there you can check and see about buying some rat bastard toe tags that you can match up with dead rats and go uh, become an infectious bastard and infect infectious I'm, I'm sorry infectious agent and in fact, some of these Jeeps that are uh, that you run across, it's kind of like the the ducking of Jeeps, but it's like uh, uh, the, the, the show with a bad attitude <laughs> infecting Jeeps. So we kind of like that idea of it's more it's more uh, in your face type thing than here's a sweet little duck. It's like, here's a filthy rat, you bastard. So <laughs> go over there and check it out. JeepTalkShow.com. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I've done some digging, and I found a recorded phone call when Josh called Xfinity to complain about his oh, internet no. going down. Oh, no. Here it is. This one you thought it was safe. That's spelled Rat Bastard. Thank you for calling Xfinity. <laughs> My name is Omar Habib Patil, <laughs> but you may call me Doug. How may I help you? I was on my Star Trek nudie site, and I was halfway between <laughs> Captain Janeway Nips and her final frontier, if you know what I mean. Then wham, all of a sudden, I got no more interwebs. Let me take a moment to look at that for you, sir. Oh yeah, I see a high volume of traffic. I shut our equipment down. We're just not quite set up to handle that amount of nerd porn in Oregon land. <laughs> oh jeez, what am I going to do? I have to record the Jeep talk show. It's the number one Jeep podcast. Have you heard of it? Sir, please don't fill my ear holes with such lies. Everyone knows the Jeep Talk Show is the number three podcast. The better podcast is the Mohinder Talk Show. If you've driven, wanted to drive, or owned nothing but a Mohinder, this podcast is for you. Ah, what's the number one podcast? Or the 10-minute off-road podcast with Nikki G. Uh, that guy cracks me up. Have you heard his whale songs? Ah, that's great. But that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you that the problem with kleptomaniacs is that they take everything literally. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, come it's... on, give me a break. I'm no Nikki G. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll chat at you later. Have a good one. Bye. It starts out high and then goes low. <laughs> You're supposed to go yeah. low and then go high. <laughs> at least three different dialects in there. I think I went through a couple of... Now, I just want to mention, as well. it's- <laughs> I just want to mention, Nikki G works the evening shift. And I think uh, other than the, the midnight shift, this would explain a lot of his creativity. Because <laughs> he's got a lot of I think he's been huffing time. that half gas again. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, great stuff. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Ball flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. Man, I would assume on the radio, too. What the hell? One of these days, you know, at least on, on satellite radio, if not terrestrial, but uh, boy, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, you know, syndicated in, in uh, you know, 37 cities across the nation or something like that on FM oh, radio. Oh, I'm thinking about more like Art Bell, like 307 uh, stations across the country. All more- AM and at 3 yeah. o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh, I take it. He made a bunch of money. Of course, he had to live out in the middle, 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 the middle, the middle of the desert. So there you go. I don't know. Be, that might be fun. I, I bet you there's some good wheeling out there. I'll move to Moab. <laughs> sure, no oh, problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Jason from Beaver Falls, PA. I haven't called you guys in a while. I think the last time I called you was 2019. Oh, that's too long. And I am the caller that was going back and listening to all of the old shows. Oh. uh, When Tony started the XJ talk and everything. I thought we had lost him. And uh, I finally got through (laughs) him here last year, but I just haven't had time to talk to you. Uh, Oh, he fell in. And that's about it, really. It was very long listening to him. The whole (laughs) shutdown thing kind of helped out because I can listen to him at my leisure pace. Um, it is interesting, 
But other than that, just letting you know that I finally finished all of them and I'm caught up. And uh, so you can send me that listening badge anytime you want. Also, if, do you guys have any more stickers that um, you're giving away? Uh, I know before you uh, had something where, you know, if you send you a, an envelope and everything, you put the stickers in and send it back. So if you're still doing that, um, just say something so I can get some more stickers off you. Other than that, uh, the last sticker I had, I got two of them from Tony, and I put one on my Jeep, and I put one on my friend's uh, Land Cruiser, and he didn't see it there for a while. And when he did see it, it's kind of funny yes. to see his expression. But other than that, talk to you guys soon. Uh, thanks for everything you do. Bye. Oh, for, that's uh, great. For, for nothing, for, if nothing else but for that, Jason, uh, we'll try and get you out another couple of stickers here pretty soon. But yeah, uh, Tony, are, do we still have an inventory? Do people still just send in a self-addressed stamp envelope? Yeah, yeah. I have a stack here that I'm going to be taking out to the oh, Jeep Talk Show event. Great. I think we, I Perfect. think I have 250 stickers right here in front of me on the desk. So we're going to have plenty nice. of stickers at the event, and I suspect we'll have uh, plenty more. But even if we don't, I can always always order more. Uh, and it's really simple. We actually need to stick this in the show notes so that we cover this each and every time because we love giving out the stickers. Uh, the only thing we ask you to do is uh, pay for the postage and uh, you know and fill out your your name and address on the envelope to make it uh, easy, frankly, for me to send them back to you. Uh, but yeah, a couple uh, envelopes, a couple of stamps, and yeah, bada so bing, bada boom. Self-addressed stamped envelope. So you, that means you put the stamps on it for the postage coming back, and you put the ad, your home address or wherever you want the stickers to get, or maybe the Land Rover dealership. I don't care. And then uh, we, uh, I, I get the, you send that to me, and then I uh, open that up. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> No, the Land Rover, de- Land Rover dealerships across the nation suddenly just get inundated with these envelopes full of Jeep Talk Show stickers, and it's just like it won't stop. Like every day, the, the you know the the postmaster's coming up with a new duffel bag. Here you go, Bob. You know, you know need- and it's God damn it, where are all these stickers coming from? Now, <laughs> I, you know, I am not anti Bronco, the new Ford Bronco. I just don't care anything about it. It's not a Jeep, but there's a lot of buzz about the Bronco, and I'm wondering now what we may may need to do some sort of uh, Amazon gift card or something for somebody that gets a Jeep talk show sticker and gets pictures of it on of them a Bronco. On a Bronco. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe some video from the reactions of it. Oh, God. That was amazing. <laughs> I will absolutely pitch in on that uh, because if that if that becomes a trend, uh, 100% we're doing it. Yes, that 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 may work out really well. So anyway, <laughs> hey, hey, if you guys are on board with this, uh, head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Uh, find out how to how to leave a voicemail for uh, with us and and call that number and let us know if that's something that we should be doing or not. Oh yeah, and oh, and uh, as far as the stickers go, go over there, same place, jeeptalkshow.com. Find the email address and uh, send us an email address uh, requesting stickers, and uh, we will send you uh, the uh, the address where you send your self-addressed stamped envelope back to us. And if you don't know what that is, tell me in the email and I'll let you know what that means. So, uh, and, and we have had some uh, out of uh, country requests and I actually had the, had somebody ask me, can you tell me what the postage would be uh, to their country? And I, I don't know how I would actually go about doing that. Uh, so, uh, I have to go into the post office and yeah. with that information and they would they would explain it to you but I don't I don't think that you could you could just find that willy-nilly no especially because you know there'll be weights involved and stuff like that as well so. right yeah it's quite expensive to even just to send sick mm-hmm. overseas but anyway uh, uh, the, the, the we may be, uh, have to come up with something like that maybe we can find somebody overseas that would be able to uh, handle that for us but anyway that's uh, that's gonna be in the in the future son bum but but Jason thanks so much for calling and the, the funny story. absolutely You know, unfortunately, we're not going to be hearing that sound at uh, the Jeep Talk Show Texas event, at least not from my Cherokee, since it's going to be at home still. So, sadly, and, and I'm going to be, this is going to be just like Rubicon 2.0 for me. Uh, I'll be at a, uh, at a great place uh, with a bunch of Jeepers, and uh, I'll be uh, not having my Jeep with me. And I'll, that's all I'll be thinking about the entire time is, <laughs> well, if I had my Jeep, I'd go over this like this, and I'd take this line, and boy, I wish I had my Jeep with me, and yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the great op- the great thing is is that you will get to feel uh, what it's like to uh, uh, go over off-road obstacles and stuff, and the, the Gladiator, albeit as a passenger, you'll still get to feel it. No, I'm just giving mm-hmm. you a hard time. I'm going to let you drive. <laughs> 
it's it, it, I just thought about this. It would have been great if I had everything set up so I could have taken the Cherokee out there at the same time, and then we both could be hitting the trails, and I could oh, be I could be on the oh. radio going, nope, nope, don't do that to my Cherokee. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Tony. Trust me. Oh no, I'd I'd be sitting there playing with that atlas endlessly. Oh, yeah, no. that'd be a, those, a good time. Those knobs would be rub smooth, but it's time I got it back. <laughs> <laughs> Great, uh, great group around the campfire tonight, folks. Uh, got a lot of people around here. And uh, if you're just new to the show, uh, you're just joining us, uh, this is the part of the show where we invite you, the listener, uh, to pull up a chair around the campfire and chat with us as we discuss a topic or debate something or it's different each and every show. Uh, and so you, you can do this. You don't have to sign up for anything, really. Uh, there's no pay to play, nothing like that. No VIP status. Anybody can join in on the campfire side chat, and we'll let you know how to do that here in just a little bit. Uh, but for now, I'm going to ask you the question uh, of, uh, well, kind of what you would take off of your Jeep. You know, the world spends over $5 billion every year customizing Jeeps by modifications or by bolting on this or that. And we all like putting new things, new shinies on the Jeep, right? But what's the first thing that you took off of your Jeep? Oftentimes, modifications or, uh, or that sort of stuff requires you to remove something from the Jeep. Maybe you swapped it out for something else. Whatever it may be, uh, you got rid of something on the Jeep or swapped it out for something else. What is it? That's the question this episode. And we're going to go down uh, the list tonight and uh, and talk with a whole bunch of different Jeepers. We've got Bob, two cheap Jeep guys with us tonight. Uh, for top of the list, Bob, what would you say is the first thing that you took off of your Jeep? The uh, rear bumper and put on a tire swing bumper. Good mod, man. That is a good mod. I've gone through a couple of iterations of uh, spare tire carriers, and uh, and that is one thing that I think really changes the way a Jeep looks, is having that spare tire hanging off the back of it. Uh, and so that that's a great modification. That's oftentimes uh, one of the first things people do is change out bumpers. Uh, Bob, I'm not, not surprised that was one of the direction that you would go with as well. Uh, we got Chris with us with 7slats.com. Uh, if you're looking uh, for an interesting Jeep blog, I uh, want to see some great content, some amazing pictures, go check out 7slats.com. Chris, what is the first thing that you took off of your Jeep? The uh, front sway bar links. Change them out for quick disconnects. You know, on the first thing, that I took off, first thing I took off of my own Jeep was the rear sway bar. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I, I first did to my Jeep, as a lot of people do, is uh, is lift it. And, uh, and that was one of the first things to go. And it never never got back underneath the jeep ever again uh john here with us uh john what would you say is the, the first thing that you removed from your jeep uh for me it was the uh factory jk hood latches so that the hood going down the highway would flutter really bad with those like, mm -hmm. rubber, stretchy hood latches so i swapped those out to uh some rugged ridge you know just one's a little more solid so that was the first thing i did yeah, the Jeep is not an aerodynamic vehicle, is it? And, uh, and and the front end of that thing is a big ass air catcher, and you know you, you get a little bit of MPGs or uh, miles per hour rather uh, underneath your belt, and uh, and you get some hood uh, air underneath that hood. Yeah, it starts fluttering a little bit. Those stock latches do not have uh, what I would call tight tolerances <laughs> uh, with them. There's a little bit too much flex in that in that rubber, and uh, it's not meant to really keep the the hood down. Uh, for any length of time or, or certainly any speed or, uh, or any degree of, of vibration whatsoever. So, yeah, that's a good one. That's a common one. I've, I've had uh, featured those hood latches. I think they're even the, the, that, that brand even uh, of hood latches on, uh, on must have uh, on the show before in the past. It, it, it is a common modification that a lot of people do to their Jeep. Uh, so, yeah, good. It, ha have you been happy with the, with the ones you went with? Oh, yeah. It's, it was night and day difference, right? And the biggest difference is I swapped them out after my first trip to Colorado because going through to Mexico, I mean, it was horrible. So the second time I went to Colorado, I got a direct comparison and it was night and day difference. I mean, hood stay planted and they're adjustable, the rugged ridge. So you can actually tighten up the bumper. Say, so. Yeah, oftentimes they, they're, they're adjustable and it takes a little bit of time to figure out how you got to adjust it. Did, was there much playing around with them uh, out of the box? No, I mean, it was, it was basically just get it snug, tighten it up, and then there you go. So I, I haven't touched them in probably, I don't know, two years now. So Nice. They, they just work. Nice. Well, I'll probably be featuring those uh, here again on the, on the Jeep Talk Show's uh, must-have item of the week for your Jeep in the very near future. Uh, it is one of those uh, uh, very common, very affordable, and, uh, and nicely changes the looks of the Jeep a little bit as well. Jim F. with us. Jim? 
Uh, what's the first thing that you removed from your Jeep? Kind of sorry, but it's going to be the floor mats. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, uh, really, though, uh, a stock flimsy piece of rubber down on the floor, not really meant to catch or do anything other than put a barrier between the bottom of your foot, uh, bottom of the sole of your foot and, and, and the carpet of the Jeep. So, uh, yeah, man, getting some weather techs in there or something like that, uh, some, some Husky liners, I mean, anything like that yep. is going to be a step up. Jim, what did you go with? Uh, I think I went with the uh, the rugged ridge ones. One look like they've got the tire tread on them. Yeah, I like those too. Yeah. Just for that reason as well, the tire tread pattern in them, uh, I, I like that as well. And really, uh, the rugged ridge, uh, the husky liners, uh, the weather techs, they all are kind of along the same sort of lines. Uh, they all perform very similarly. Uh, I can't really tell you which one has a better fit over the other. I think they all pretty much use the same laser fit technology to uh, to uh, you know mold those and form them to the floor of the Jeep for that particular vehicle. Uh, have you had any issues with yours as far as fitment or performance? No, actually, they're still in there even after all this, all all the the mods I've done to to this thing with you know the whole new suspension stuff, everything. It's still in there. So, real quick, do you still have the floor mats that you pulled out first? Yes, I just saw them in my shop this week. <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> Yeah, oftentimes those and will find a find a home on another vehicle, or maybe end up as a uh, as a beer coaster or something like that. But uh, uh, no, it's kind of cool that you still have them, though. How how long has it been? And I moved a thousand miles between there and five six oh years. Oh my gosh! And you kept it through a move, even. I can't tell you how much stuff I've lost over the years in, in various moves and stuff. By the time I was twenty one years old, I had moved more times than I had had birthdays. But inside baseball, there for you guys. All right, Christopher, what's the first thing you removed from your Jeep? Uh, I removed the factory head unit <laughs> and put in a, a dual din. There you go. Yeah, the stock stereos always leave a little something to be desired, especially from Jeep. Uh, nowadays, I mean, maybe the last couple few years, uh, you know, you don't have to screw with it quite as much. But, uh, but any of the older Jeeps, uh, I'd say if you're in the neighborhood of, you know, anything over 10 years old, you're probably going to be looking at doing some modifications to the stereo system in the very near future. Uh, Christopher, what brand of Double Din did you end up going with? I just went with a cheap dual. It had uh, Apple CarPlay on it, so I was pretty happy with that. You know, and nowadays, that's really all you need, right? You, you, is the Apple yeah. CarPlay or the uh, the Android Auto or whatever it is, the other, the other one. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, because really, ultimately, everything that you do, whether it's GPS or music or telling the time, uh, is generally done through your phone. So, uh, what else do you need a stereo for other than to play some FM radio or to have something to play the Jeep Talk Show through? Uh, Steve-O with us tonight. Steve-O, what's the first thing you removed, from, uh, pulled off of your Jeep? The cheesy dealer license plate frames. Oh, yes. Oh, jeez, right? Free yeah. advertising. <laughs> <laughs> they always have, yeah, either a, a cheesy slogan on them, or you know, the name plastered across it. And then, yeah, come on, get rid of it. Did you did you put anything else in its place, or did you did you just leave the plate uh, plate bare? I put on my Penn State license plate frames. Oh, there you I go. Just, right, I had, had, had to go for my school. Yeah, so. nothing wrong. Lo- nothing wrong with uh, representing the alma mater, right? That's right. Uh, Travis with us tonight. Travis, what was the first thing you pulled off of your Jeep? The first thing off my 89 YJ was the stereo, honestly. Um, with the rebuild, it was my stock suspension. I pulled the leaf springs and went with the three and a half BDS. But it was a stereo originally in 89. I was adding things to the Jeep, but never removed, uh, except the stereo. I wanted to upgrade that guy. I want to say back uh, back in the day, I remember installing a pull out stereo into into a Jeep YJ, uh, and you know, you know, because I mean that's that's what you did, right? Uh, you you know, you had a you had a Jeep that uh, you pulled the doors off, you pulled the top off, uh, and stereo security back in the day was uh, yeah. was a handle. A Stereos handle were much more expensive, much more valuable. Oh, no, it's entirely. Yeah. Right. And, and so to remove that stereo, uh, you pulled out the entire unit. It was a pull out stereo. Uh, I know a lot of people in the millennials are like, why, what are you talking about? Uh, no, look up pull out stereo. It'll, it'll take you back a little bit. Uh, but yeah, no, I remember installing one of those in a YJ at one point in time back in the day. That's funny. Uh, Larry, Jeep and Mo with us. Larry, what's the first thing you <clears throat> pulled out of your Jeep? Front bumper. We went with the. Uh since, since right now it's got open diffs, I put a winch bumper on the front so I could mount a winch on it. 
Yeah, with uh, open diffs front and rear, you got to have a little something for recovery, right? Because you're bound to get yourself yes, stuck sooner or later. So uh, get in low of your head. Yeah, re recovery points and uh, and something to self recovery with as well. What, what what kind of winch do you have on the front? It's a Smittybill winch on on the front of it. It's uh, the twelve thousand pound winch. So you know the big trail cows that a JL is. So. Needed something a little bit more than uh, than the standard eight or nine k that you see on the front of a Jeep. Uh, I've been seeing a lot more ten k winches on the front of Jeeps nowadays, uh, and even some twelve k. Uh, that that is some serious uh, line movement though in a twelve k winch. Uh, although I mean, still overrated for a JKU even uh, even fully built and whatnot. But uh, I mean, hell, you're you're pulling out an F two fifty with uh, out of the out of the mud with one of those things. But but yeah, has yeah. it done uh, really well for you? Oh, so far so good. Yeah, so many bolts are, are good winches. They get a bad rep from a lot of people. I've had one on the front of my Jeep for better part of, I don't know, seven or eight years or more. Uh, and I've had I've done some serious recovery work with that thing, uh, and, and it's done just fine. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, Mike Zen. Uh, Mike, what's the first thing you pulled off of your Jeep? Uh, it was the sweet part disconnect. Wanted to make sure I had some articulation uh, every time I went off-roading, so definitely with a sweet part disconnect was that uh, one. Uh, I There's want to say I, I agree with J uh, John Lee re uh, regarding those head latches to be replaced. I actually had one of the latches uh, snap on me on the freeway. Oh, no. <clears throat> it, it, was, uh, it was actually a windy, windy day, and uh, I had to pull over. Luckily, it didn't break the whole hood up, but uh, I had to pre uh, tie it down with uh, mechanical wire just to hold it down. Uh, oh, and I went to the dealer to replace it. It cost me 80 bucks just for one latch. No so, way. Yeah, Dang. so I was like, I mean, I needed to replace it, but I think if I would have went with an aftermarket uh, foot latch, it would have been a lot better. Oh, no, 100%. Yeah. Now, do you have aftermarket on there now, or are they still OEM? No, they're still the old OEM. I figure they're, they're still good, but uh, that is something that I don't want to uh, replace uh, in the future. Yeah, I might want to move that up under your short list then. Uh, good, good one there. Yeah. So sway bars, you know, it, you know those disconnects. Uh, there is nothing that is going to give you better articula more articulation uh, out off off road than getting those sway bars disconnected. And uh, and whether you're either just pulling off the factory ones, which I did for years, uh, or you know you have some quick disconnects. Uh, either way, uh, get those things disconnected and get that suspension articulating. It will drastically improve your off road ability. Uh, Mudman084, we got another Josh here with us tonight. Josh, uh, everybody pulls uh, something off their Jeep sooner or later. What's the first thing you got rid of on yours? The plastic side steps on the Sahara. I went with some real rock sliders. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, no, those plastic side steps. I mean, they, they are, for all intents and purposes, just decoration. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, they, they really don't do anything other than sort of take up space. They're they're absolutely unfunctional in any in every way, uh, really. Uh, and, and so I don't even know why they put them on there, other than possibly it's 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 something they can sell somebody or uh, to to you know fill a fill a gap that would otherwise need something else. Uh, but no, good one. What did you end up going with as far as uh, uh, swapping those things out? What what'd you put in their place? I put the Weston rock slides on. Really? I, I haven't heard too many people uh, uh, running those things. How have they done for you? I haven't had a chance to rub on them too much, but the reason I went with them, okay. the guy that recommended them, he uses them a lot and hard. Well, having some, having some experience, uh, somebody who's had them in the past, had something, uh, whether, whatever product it may be, and had personal experience with it, you get a little bit of uh, you know, reputation from it. You can see how they've held up. Uh, you get a little bit of... Uh, 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 an idea of what they can withstand and 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 the longevity of them and everything. Well, I hope those things work out for you. I haven't heard too many people uh, give us reports on those. I haven't seen too many reviews on them as far as how they do and how they hold up over the long term. So you'll have to keep us posted the next time you find yourself in the rocks. Uh, what about you, Tony? What's the first thing you pulled off? And you're a Jeep family. You've got you've got at least three or four Jeeps in the driveway. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the 98 XJ was the first Jeep for the family. What's the first thing you pulled off of that rig? I guess it would have, I was going to say rear bumper, but actually I think it was, uh, the, uh, uh, the stock suspension, uh, the one inch lift that came from the factory since it was a upcountry 
uh, package on that, uh, that it Cherokee. It was an upcountry. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that I've ever known that in yeah. uh, in the, all the years that I've known you. And and Tony bought that Cherokee, uh, that XJ Cherokee, off the showroom floor, brand spanking new in '98 or '99, whatever it was. Uh, so he is the first original and only owner of that vehicle. Yep. Yeah, and uh, but uh, it was the uh, the the suspension lift came off. Uh, a three four and a half inch lift went on it, and uh, then the uh, uh, ten and a half by fifteens and some thirty two inch uh, the original KMs. So it would have been uh, tires, wheels, and suspension uh, would have been wow. the first thing. And and technically the suspension was the first thing that came off because I had to do the lift before you could do the tires. And I still had to cut them uh, with the four and a half four and a half inch lift with the thirty two inch tires because you get a bit of rub on the uh, the rear uh, wheel flares. On I'm sorry, the rear part of the front wheel flares. So I had to trim those a little bit. Of course, yes. there's uh, there's no issues with any rubbing now. <laughs> no, <laughs> on <anything>. certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> Very good stuff. Well, big thanks out there to Chris, Greg, John, Jim, Christopher, Steve, Travis, Larry, Mike, Josh, and Bob as well. All of our Camp Fireside Chat folks. Uh, here tonight. And of course, if you would like to join in on the Camp Fireside Chat, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is follow us on Facebook. It's literally that easy. Or you can receive notifications via our newsletter. Uh, to sign up for our newsletter, just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You're going to find a link to click and sign up for, and it's just as easy to unsubscribe as it is to subscribe. We don't sell your information. We don't spam you. It's li- literally one email a week uh, that you'll get. And it'll be all lots of inside information about what's coming up in the show. Uh, we have some giveaways that we may be having uh, coming up. You'll get some inside information about that. Uh, some uh, stuff about what you know what's uh, what's going to be happening, what, what we're going to be doing on the show, uh, recording dates, and of course the link to sign up or the link rather to join in for the Zoom meeting uh, to get in on the Camp Fireside Chat. And that's how we do it. It's a Zoom meeting. Uh, everybody's uh, got some experience with that more or less by now with uh, COVID and remote working and all that sort of stuff. So uh, that's how we're doing it here at the Jeep Talk Show. And we highly encourage you to do it. It's a lot of fun. A lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes in the Zoom room as well. So uh, we've got people that uh, that join up each and every week just for that as well. We encourage you to do that. So that's it for the show for this week, my fellow Jeeper. Until next week, be sure to sign up for our newsletter so you can find out how to join in on our Camp Fireside chat. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. And you'd better subscribe to the show or you might hear me doing entire episodes talking just like this. Podcasting since 2010. 